Hello, uh, my name is uh, Mahari Takaste. I'm an assistant professor at Ag in uh, Agriculture uh, and Biosystems Engineering at Iowa State University, Ames, Iowa. Uh, the topic of my uh, presentation for today is a tractor and a central field planter tire inflation pressure effects on corn yield and soil physical properties. Uh, before I uh, uh, go to the contents, I want to introduce my, the co-authors of this work, uh, uh, Dr. Thomas Awey, uh, agricultural engineer from uh, uh, National Soil Dynamics Laboratory in Auburn, Alabama. Uh, Dr. Hannah, uh, a retired uh, extension professor at Iowa State University. Uh, Sally uh, brought back um, and Kenneth brought back uh, they are from uh, Precision Inflation, uh, West Des Moines, Iowa. And Bradley Harris, uh, Agricultural um, Tires uh, from Firestone in Des Moines, Des Moines Iowa. <laughs> so uh, uh, in the soil compaction topic, you know, axle loads uh, for a lot of modern equipments it exceeds uh, what we call the 10 ton as a limit for excessive soil compaction. So uh, we've seen this in combines, grain cart, and manure tanks. Uh, similarly, with central fuel uh, planters, there is a, a, a concern that excessive soil compaction uh, might happen due to the load from the uh, central fuel uh, uh, grain tank. Uh, at the center of the, uh, the planter. Tire manufacturers have introduced uh, advanced deflection technologies uh, uh, with Firestone, uh, they call it uh, advanced deflection design. There are two uh, that are of interest. Uh, one is the IF, it's called increased flexion. Another one is the uh, very high uh, flexion. Uh, so those carry about 20 to 40 percent more load at the same tire inflation pressure uh, as compared to the standard radial fly tires. They also have uh, more deflection uh, than the uh, radial standard tires. Central, another technology that uh, is in the soil compaction management is central tire inflation uh, systems uh, where uh, the uh, tire inflation can be controlled uh, for uh, either road or field load conditions of the machines. So with those new uh, advanced technologies, uh, either on the tire or on uh, technology management of tire inflation, uh, limited studies exist to evaluate, you know, how are this uh, high deflection uh, uh, IF or uh, BF uh, standard uh, tires on soil compaction, crop yield, and vehicle productivity performance, particularly fuel, traction efficiency, or the environment. So in our study, we focus only on soil compaction and crop yield. So the overall research goal or the research question is central commodity field seed hoppers on planters sometimes cause concern with the potential for excessive soil compaction, uh, in particular underneath the center section of the plant. So research question of this uh, triggered uh, this uh, research to investigate uh, the uh, soil and crop yield effects under the planter sec center section, uh, which are like uh, uh, six rows of the 24 row, because we use a 24 row planter in this study, and investigate, you know, how do those uh, tire inflation pressure settings uh, uh, show their uh, uh, effect on, on soil compaction and crop yield. So the specific objectives were to uh, investigate the effects of tire inflation pressure settings of a row crop tractor, equipped with IF uh, Firestone tires, and uh, a planter equipped with uh, VF uh, tires on corn yield and soil physical properties. We measured soil cone index and soil bulk density. Uh, those are what I would call the standard soil compaction uh, measurement uh, uh, properties. 
the study was conducted on a four hectare, uh, close to like a 10 acre field. Uh, the two dominant soil on that field was uh, Kensaw and Clarion. Uh, that has clay loam to loam soil. Uh, it's at Iowa State University, Agriculture, Engineering, Agronomy in uh, Boone, Iowa. So for this study, uh, we uh, did like a conventional tillage system, uh, described at 12 inch uh, tillage depths uh, with a tractor running at five miles per hour. Uh, this done uh, on, in fall, uh, right after harvest. And in the spring, uh, we use a field cultivator, uh, uh, put a target four inch of the uh, tillage depths, operate at six months per hour. This was done before, before planting. All the other cultural practices, uh, uh, chemical application uh, were for uh, either pest and weed control uh, and the hybrid, we follow the Iowa State University agronomy uh, recommendations. Uh, managed by the farm. We did a completely randomized design, uh, three replicates of three tire inflation pressure, uh, standard radial tire pressure, IF, VF, where the IF is for the tractor, VF was for the planter tires, and central tire inflation system. Data on corn yield, soil corn index, so bulk density were collected in two years, in 2017 and 18. So first I would like to go over uh, 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 the load configurations of uh, the uh, tractor and planter. So the first one was on transportation configuration. This means that the planter uh, uh, was folded um, so the load was supported uh, uh, from the planter on the center uh, tires, the four of them, and the tractor. Uh, so we measured the axle load. Uh, the loads were uh, measured to uh, determine uh, the tire manufacturer recommended tire inflation pressures uh, using the tire uh, book. The uh, tractor was a John Deere H310R. Uh, uh, mechanical front wheel, uh, mechanical uh, front wheel drive, the front wheel was engaged. And the planter was a John Deere uh, 1770 NT uh, with central fuel, uh, 24 row, 30 inch uh, row spacing. Uh, the uh, tires on the tractor duals were IF 420 slash 85 R34. And the rear tires were IF uh, for 80 uh, slash 80 R50. On the uh, planter tires, uh, for the center, there were four, and for the uh, uh, wings, there were four, and all of them uh, had the uh, BF uh, tire on. Now, if you look at it on a transport configuration, there was no any load supported from the uh, tires on the wings. Another configuration was the planting configuration. Uh, with this one, uh, uh, all the 24 rows uh, were engaged uh, with the ground and the uh, row units uh, were uh, prepared to, uh, to do on a planting setting. So if you look at that now, the planter wings uh, uh, support loads and uh, because of the uh, load uh, transfer, the front duals had more weight uh, compared to the uh, transportation configuration. Uh, relatively, you know, in a small amount, the uh, central uh, planter and the rear had a slightly lower, uh, lower weight on the axle. So this is how we measured the uh, weight on the planting configuration, uh, where the scales were put on the, uh, uh, on the planter. Uh, tires. All right, according to the uh, tire manufacturer uh, inflation pressure uh, book, uh, which uh, determines uh, the uh, correct or rated tire inflation pressure uh, for the load condition, there are three load conditions. Uh, one was the transportation configuration, meaning that it was based on the standard radial tire inflation pressure 
uh, where the uh, tire inflation pressure was set for the maximum load uh, that the tires would see uh, um, through the uh, operation. For uh, IF, uh, it's, the tire is different. Uh, it's IF and VF. There's a, a different tire inflation pressure settings uh, based on the manufacturer where IF being 20% uh, more load can be supported for the same tire inflation pressure as the standard radial tire, or VF is 40% more load uh, for the same tire inflation pressure. The CTIS is, it uses the uh, the field load condition uh, for the field condition, and uh, you would change it to the uh, road uh, load condition uh, on a transport uh, mode. So really the uh, CTIS is where you just regulate the uh, tire inflation pressure, uh, putting more air for the road and low air for, uh, for the field, depending on the uh, load uh, uh, per, per, per tire. So uh, tire manufacturers and uh, the CTIS technology experts gave us this uh, library of uh, tire inflation pressures for the uh, IF tractor uh, duals, both front and rear, and the flange. So out of this, we design an experiment uh, for the standard, uh, which is for transport mode, uh, it was, uh, sorry, my typo here, this should be high and the CTI is in the low setting. In other words, uh, on the standard, uh, uh, there was uh, all, you know, for the tractor planter and the uh, uh, both center and wing uh, had a higher tire inflation pressure and the CTI is, it was the lowest. So we want to understand the effect of tire inflation pressures uh, on the uh, crop yield in soil compaction. Uh, planting was done with this uh, uh, planter, John Deere 1770NT. Uh, it was full with the uh, uh, seeds, um, and the row unit was set up to, uh, to do close to like 200 pounds on the, uh, um, on the row unit. And planting was done perpendicular to the uh, tillage direction. All right, so for soil compaction, we measured soil cone index uh, according to the ASAB standards. Uh, we took, uh, you have to take, uh, you know, so many uh, uh, readings of soil cone penetration to get a very good uh, 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 sampling. So uh, we took about 54, uh, you know, per each tire uh, inflation uh, pressure treatments and each tire inflation pressure uh, we replicated three times. So we had a lot of uh, data. So the data was averaged on three depth ranges, uh, 0 to, uh, uh, to 15 centimeters, 0 to 6 inch, uh, 15 to 30, and 32 to 60. Uh, because we were interested in the central uh, section of the planter, uh, what we did was uh, we took a measurement at six uh, positions. Uh, let me explain it uh, if, uh, each of them uh, because the results uh, will uh, will be presented uh, in a, uh, related to the position. So one was the uh, tractor center line, which is the untrafficked uh, uh, zone, and then followed by two, uh, three, uh, and four, five, and and six. But for now, I want you to pay attention. The four is the central line of the tire, which is a tire center line. Um, and uh, we designated that like a traffic uh, zone. And uh, uh, the zone, the position six is the pinch row, which is right in between the two dual tires of the, uh, the uh, track. We also took uh, other positions, you know, uh, two, three, which was close to the edge of the, uh, uh, the inner uh, of the dual tires, uh, and the fifth one was the same. A lot of the data analysis for this presentation will focus on the untrafficked, which is tractor center line, uh, trafficked, which is the tire center line, and then the pincho, which is between the two, two tires. 
for uh, soil bulk density, uh, we uh, uh, took a sample uh, with a soil core cylinder. What you see here, it has a diameter of uh, uh, 69.85 uh, millimeter and a height of 40 millimeter. Uh, we took it at two depths. Uh, one was at six inch, another one was at 12 inch uh, relative to the untrafficked soil surface. We took it uh, laterally on the uh, uh, position relative to the uh, tractor center. Uh, one position was uh, uh, in the tractor center, which is the untrafficked at the tire center, uh, underneath the center of the tire, which is the trafficked uh, sampling uh, uh, position. We also took in row, like a pinch row between the two, the two tires. So we measure all this uh, in the uh, left grooves uh, of the, uh, uh, this is a rare view of the, uh, uh, the tractor tires. So in summary, okay, to quantify the soil compaction, we measure soil bulk density, at two depths, six inches, 12 inch relative from the untrafficked soil surface at three positions, um, untraffic, traffic, and pinch row uh, with soil uh, uh, compenetrometer. Um, we also took it at center line, tractor line, uh, tire center line, and in the pinch row. For uh, the soil coin index, we took at six, but I think I'm gonna focus on those three for, uh, for this presentation. All right, for corn yield, uh, we harvested uh, with four row uh, combine and 30 inch row spacing. Uh, this uh, presentation here will focus on the uh, uh, center section of the, uh, the planter. Uh, yield was uh, measured by uh, uh, a scale uh, that has the 50 pound uh, load capacity. When I uh, say uh, planter centers on, I'm talking about, uh, you know, row uh, 13, uh, row 10, 11, 12, uh, 13, 14, 15. So those six uh, is what uh, the focus of this, uh, to quantify the study of the tire inflation pressure. All right. So for data analysis on those uh, uh, soil uh, crop yield and soil uh, physical properties, we, an we use an analysis of variance at a, st a statistical significance level of uh, alpha 0.05, which is 5% error. All right, so I will jump to the results. Uh, we'll uh, try to categorize them into two. The first one being the tire inflation pressure effect on crop yield. Uh, at the planter center section. So uh, the standard radial tire, which is, uh, you know, the high tire inflation pressure setting uh, showed uh, uh, the uh, uh, lowest yield and statistically lower uh, from the IF and VF settings uh, and the CTIS settings uh, by about, you know, 4.5, 1% lower. Uh, compared uh, to the CTIS setting and about 4.34% lower compared to the, uh, uh, to the I or VF uh, settings. So uh, in other words, uh, when the tire inflation pressure uh, was set for the field load condition, which uh, gave you know, the lowest uh, tire inflation pressures, um, it gave uh, uh, you know, a higher yield uh, compared to what a standard radial tire inflation pressure settings of a standard radial tires. But in this case, uh, the, the tires uh, were, uh, were IF, but we only changed the uh, standard tire inflation pressure. On the IF and VF, uh, it's the uh, uh, tire uh, manufacturer uh, tire inflation pressure settings of the IF and VF tires, where the IF was for the tractor, VF was for the planter. It was still also lower 
than the standard tire inflation pressure. The least significant difference uh, for this uh, statistical analysis was uh, 8.37 bushels per acre. So this yield difference uh, uh, would be less of, um, you know, if you look at the whole field, um, if we had the 18 rows, uh, but to uh, uh, understand the effect of the tire inflation pressure on the center section of the planter, the yield differences uh, uh, were significant compared to the uh, standard radial tire inflation pressure. The other results uh, uh, to uh, understand the effect of tire inflation pressure were on soil cone index and soil bulk density. So this is on soil bulk density. Uh, we didn't see you know, a lot of differences at the uh, deeper, uh, which is the uh, 12 inch uh, soil uh, depths. Uh, we saw uh, you know, uh, significant differences uh, at the shallow, which is a six inch depth, for example. Uh, the main differences uh, were between the, um, at the different uh, position. So uh, if you compare the uh, tire center, which is a traffic and it has a, a, you know, a higher uh, compaction, the uh, bulk density was higher compared to the untrafficked, which is a tractor center line or the pinch row. So statistically speaking, uh, you know, for all tire inflation pressure settings, the standard IFVF and CTIS, the uh, uh, bulk density shows a higher compaction at the uh, tractor center, which is a traffic uh, relative to the uh, untracked. Uh, on average, you know, the, uh, the uh, pinch row had also, you know, a slightly higher uh, bulk density for each um, uh, tire inflation pressure settings. Uh, but the, uh, statistically speaking, the uh, uh, differences uh, at alpha value of 0 0.05 were only between the uh, uh, untrafficked, uh, mm -hmm. the IF and VF setting uh, to the, uh, to the, uh, both the uh, standard and the CTIs. All right, so on soil cone index, uh, again, you know, with this one, uh, what we've seen was uh, uh, the uh, effect of tire inflation pressure was uh, uh, more, uh, more visible on the shallow uh, soil uh, depth, which is zero to 15 centimeter. And that's what I will focus this presentation. Uh, there was some differences in the 15 to, uh, to uh, 30 centimeter, which is 6 to, uh, to 12. Uh, but I think statistically, the main differences we, uh, we have seen was on the top um, uh, six inches. For each tire inflation pressure settings, uh, we have uh, measured statistically significant differences by position. Uh, in particular, the uh, um, untrafficked, traffic, and the pinch row uh, sampling uh, positions. There was no statistical differences by the tire inflation pressure effect. So I'm going to present the results for each tire inflation pressure, uh, pressure settings, uh, their effect on uh, by, by position. Okay, so this one is on the standard radial tire inflation uh, pressure. You could see that this uh, soil compaction as measured by the soil current index was statistically higher uh, from the traffic or the tire center compared to the untrafficked and the pinch hole. <laughs> Similarly, we, uh, we have seen also the uh, 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 the traffic uh, uh, zone had statistically higher uh, soil cone index uh, relative to the other uh, untracked and pinch row uh, uh, for the IF and VF 
higher inflation pressure settings as well. Similarly, you know, for the CTIS, uh, it was uh, the same trend, uh, higher uh, compaction measured uh, at the uh, traffic of, traffic of zone. So in summary, as a conclusion from, uh, for the corn yield on the center section of the planter, the corn yield from the standard radial tire inflation pressure treatment was statistically lower compared to yield from the CTIS and the IF and VF settings by about 4.5 and 4.3% uh, uh, respectively. Uh, from the soil compaction uh, measurement with the standard uh, uh, ASAB soil cone penetrometer and soil bulk density, we do not see any significant differences by the tire inflation pressure, uh, but what we saw was a statistically significant uh, soil cone index uh, where the tire center and in row, which is the pinch row, we're statistically higher than the soil cone index in the traction center, which is the untrafficked zone at an alpha value of 0.05. Um, at the tire center position, which is the traffic, uh, even though the standard radial tire had a higher cone index in the top six inch uh, uh, depths, uh, but there was no any uh, statistical difference uh, among the three tire inflation treatments. For the soil bulk density, the tire center, which is a traffic zone, had statistically higher values than the other zones, the uh, uh, in row or pinch row, and then the tractor center was in each tire inflation pressure treatment. No significant differences in soil bulk density were observed among the three tire inflation pressure treatments. Um, Overall, the standard tire inflation pressure treatment created the highest soil bulk density and the highest soil cone index within the uh, 0 to 15 uh, centimeter or 0 to 6 inch compared to the other uh, two tire inflation pressure settings.